as a requirement, is something you need to get done, folks. A lot of this stuff that I'm going to cover in the, in the class and not here today, it's not easy. And a lot of the people, unfortunately, in these classes are not passing them because the, the, the stuff that we talk about is more than just washing hands and wearing clean aprons, things like that. We talk about bacteria, parasites, and we talk about HACCP, we talk about paperwork. These are things that you need to do. And I know a lot of you are probably thinking right now, really, why do we need to be sitting in these classes at all? You're here for a reason, guys. We're here to bring the numbers down. Uh, and I love to use the numbers in the beginning of my classes just to prove to people why more people should be sitting in classes like this. New Jersey, to be honest, and Frank, a little behind. They, they need to get caught up because a lot of other states have been doing these surf safe courses for years now, and I, I think we're just getting up to speed in the state of New Jersey now, which is a good thing. The population of the United States is over 300 million people, folks. Right now, the, that population stands around 304, 305 million. Uh, it just passed over the 300 million mark somewhere towards the end of 2006. Of that number, 76 million people get sick every year from foodborne illnesses. 76 million is a quarter of the population. You got about 20 people in this class right now. Five of you are going to be getting sick from a foodborne illness this year. Now, these are estimates, I will admit, okay, the guy, uh, I get these numbers, these statistics from the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, these are the groups that come up with all these numbers, and they are just estimates, and there really is no way to determine the exact number, but he said they are pretty accurate, but of that number, over 325,000 people have to be hospitalized because of foodborne illnesses, and of that number, over 5,000 people die. 5,000 people die in, these, in this country, guys, from a lot of these things we're going to talk about right now, and a lot of other bacteria and parasites. But when I first heard that number myself, doing this stuff all my, all my life, basically, uh, I used to be a restaurant owner. I live in Philadelphia, folks, and um, I've been in this business for a very long time. I heard the number myself and I thought it seemed high. I'm thinking, come on, the United States, man, we're doing everything we can as far as food safety goes. I bet you we're right up there with all the other industrialized nations as providing safe food to our customers. But that is the problem right there, folks, because not even 15% of the 76 million are getting sick when they go out to eat at restaurants. The other 85% of that number are getting sick from what they're doing at home. And that's why I think anybody should take a class like this, whether it be a serve safe class, whether it be these uh, food handlers courses that your local inspectors are providing, anybody should be taking classes like this. I had my parents come in to take these classes, and I had to make them take the test because they're not in the business anymore, but just to see what it was like. My parents, I bet, still don't understand what I do. My, my parents were thinking, both of them growing up after a war in Europe, thought, hey, Paul, we didn't have any food. You know, whatever we were going to eat, that's what it was going to be. And I would tell you, maybe that's a good argument. Maybe if you don't have enough food around, you, you don't, uh, you got to eat what you can get. The luxury that we have is we can assume if we get somebody sick, we're not going to serve the food. Maybe you don't have that option. I do the same thing with my parents. Every time I go to their house, I rummage through their refrigerator, I tell her how to cook things, and my mom says the same thing every single time. Paul, you never got sick from these things when you were a kid. Why do you make me do all these things now? And a lot of you have heard the argument, I'm sure, before. My argument back would always be, how do you know, Mom? How do you know you didn't get me sick from these things? Because a lot of things that I talk about in this first part here, guys, will be the symptoms typically all the same, flu-like symptoms, nauseousness, and diarrhea, and vomiting. All these bacteria and parasites have the same exact symptoms. How would you know if you had these things unless you get them diagnosed by doctors? And how many of us here go to a doctor every single time you're sick? You could have had these folks just never even realized it. So what I'm going to do for you guys is I'm going to go over three things, again, time permitting. First thing I'd like to do is go over some of the bacteria and viruses that we talk about in our, in our surf safe course and other food handlers courses. I'm also going to throw you a little uh, video on about food handlers, uh, about, I'm sorry, serve safe, talking a little something about personal hygiene. And then I'm going to finish it off with some paperwork that I think is vital for everybody now. Unfortunately, one thing I've noticed in a lot of my serve safe classes here in New Jersey, people love to talk about liability and what is our responsibility to the customer. And I think uh, the paperwork that we have nowadays is going to protect us uh, because we all know we live in a so happy society and you need to do things to protect yourself from, from people in certain situations. And I'll see if I can cover that at the end for you. First thing I like to do, again, uh, talk about the reasons why we're here. We got the numbers down. We understand the reasons. Look, I believe if those numbers are reduced in this country, which these serve safe classes and other food sanders courses, 
is the aim to do. It would also save this country a hell of a lot of money. And that's what we're looking for here, guys. It, it, we're being proactive by doing things like this so you don't have to worry about these things in the future. All right, but the first thing I want to talk about is some of the things in, uh, and you'll see if you do take the Surf Safe course, talk about the micro world. Now, these microorganisms that I'm going to talk about, guys, the big five are the big ones that I really want to get into. For now, you will remember the five. Salmonella, Shigella, E. coli, Hepatitis A, and norovirus. You're going to have to know these things, guys. The big five, they are important because they are very contagious. And these will also go along with a lot of the outbreaks that have occurred. Um, the first one I'd like to talk about, salmonella, the most common one. It will correlate to the tomato outbreak that just occurred in the recent past, guys, in the last summer. Did anybody here take tomatoes off their menu last summer? Nobody did? A few people did. There we go. And I'd like to talk about that. Unfortunately, folks, I really feel in this outbreak, the people that really got hurt were not the people that got sick because nobody died from that, that outbreak. 1,400 people in over 43 states got sick from the salmonella outbreak, slash tomatoes, tomato slash peppers. Um, so the people who really got hurt since nobody died would be, in fact, the farmers. And unfortunately, after that, it would be us. Think about the price of produce right now, what it was as compared to what it was before the outbreak. We did that to ourselves. I would personally blame the media and think the media needs to be more responsible to let them know where the consumers, where these things really originated. Farmers in New Jersey lost millions of dollars last summer, and it had nothing to do with New Jersey tomatoes. It had everything to do with the tomatoes and the peppers down in the Mexico, Arizona region. That's where these things really originated. Fortunately, we paid for that ourselves. The salmonella outbreak, guys, it, it's a common one, unfortunately. A lot of outbreaks that have happened in the past, they happen a lot, but that was more prevalent because it was a very serious strand of it. But let me show you uh, salmonella. Because a lot of people do relate to what the picture shows you here, chicken and eggs. Um, everybody here has had salmonella, though, just to let you know. Every single one of you has had it. You get salmonella over 51 times in a lifetime everybody's going to get it. And there's different strands of, there's over 2,500 strands of salmonella. Typhoid fever is another name for salmonella. It's one that has to be reported of those five that I mentioned because it's easy to get it uh, from another person. Unfortunately, it's easy to get uh, from one person to another. Uh, the chicken and the eggs are the issue, but everybody knows by now there's more than just chicken and eggs dealing with salmonella, as the tomatoes, as the peanut butter outbreak. Anybody hear about that one that happened last summer? Uh, 14 people died from that outbreak, folks. That was a more serious one, unfortunately, and that one was because of unsanitary conditions. Again, something that we do to ourselves, guys. A lot of people perceive that these outbreaks that have occurred in the recent past are because of uh, chemicals they put in the products or, or equipment failure. Guys, just to let you know, the tomato slash pepper outbreak really occurred because somebody down in Mexico probably not washing the tomatoes properly, causing all those people, causing all that damage. And not the big on Mexico. It could happen in any country. It could happen in our own country. Anybody could have done these things. And again, something we do to ourselves. Salmonella has to be cooked uh, properly. Your chicken has to be cooked to 165 for 15 seconds. A lot of the numbers that we talk about, they need to be addressed. 165 for 15 seconds. Cook all chicken to that temperature. That's going to take care of these things, like salmonella. First one that has to be reported, as you can see, the symptoms, diarrhea, abdominal cramps, vomiting, fever, typical symptoms that everybody gets practically every day. How would you know if you had these things unless they get them diagnosed? All right, that's the first one I want to get into, and I, I said the prevention measure of salmonella is, in fact, cooking it. Cross-contaminations and preventing the cross-contamination issues would help prevent with this one, too. Uh, the three main reasons why people are getting sick in this business, just so like now, will be first, time temperature abuse, cooking and holding, reheating and cooling, all those numbers we address in the serve safe courses. The other factor is cross-contamination. A quick example of that, guys. Let's say I had a little restaurant. This is my only food prep table in my whole restaurant, and I wanted to make some chicken salad. Great. Get myself some raw chicken. I start cutting that up. I quickly put that to the side, grab myself some veggies, and I start cutting that up. You all know that's a no-no. We need to not only wash, rinse, and sanitize all the utensils before we start working with the veggies, we also need to wash, rinse, and sanitize the cutting board as well. Okay, that's one example of cross-contamination. There'll be plenty others as I go through these things. And on the last reason is, unfortunately, the biggest reason why people get sick from foodborne illnesses. This. This, to me, is stupid. This is ridiculous. But everybody here knows it yourself. I mean, I defy anybody here, guys. Do this. Go into any restaurant on a Friday or Saturday night. Go into the bathroom. 
and